Welcome to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, Trump's interview with Elon Musk on X raised alarm bells in the European Union with the EU's chief digital censor threatening to sanction Musk unless steps were taken to police any misinformation that might arise during the conversation. Now, unlike European bureaucrats, the U.S. government is prohibited from meddling with Trump and Musk's free speech rights. But that didn't stop one Washington Post reporter from asking White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre if there's anything they can do about it. Let's watch. Elon Musk is slated to interview Donald Trump tomorrow, tonight um, on, on X. Uh, I don't know if the president is going to tonight. Feel free to say if he is or not. Um, but I, I think that um, misinformation on Twitter is not just a campaign issue. It's a you know it's an America issue. Uh, what role does the White House uh, or the president have in sort of stopping that or stopping the spread of that or um, sort of inter intervening in that? Some of that was about campaign misinformation, but you know it's, it's a wider thing, right? Yeah, no, and you've heard us talk about this many times from here about the responsibilities that social media uh, platforms have uh, when it comes to misinformation, disinformation. Uh, don't have anything to read out from here about uh, specific ways uh, that we're working on it, but we believe that, that they have the responsibility. Uh, these are private companies, so we're also mindful of that too. Uh, but um, Look, it is. Uh, I think it, it is incredibly important uh, to to call that out as you are you're doing. I just don't have any specifics on on what we have been doing internally uh, as re as it relates to the interviews. Not something that I'm tracking, and I'm sure the president's not tracking it either. So what I found interesting about that is actually Karine Jean Pierre was more restrained than the person asking the question in terms of what the government should do about a private entity speech. Like she was being prompted, she was being asked and expected to say something totally contrary to the First Amendment, totally illegal, unconstitutional, by a reporter for the Washington Post who should, in theory, value the protections for speech that are in place in uh, under the U.S. system. Uh, but no, it was more of, yeah, what can the government do to stop what, a, a private citizen from interviewing one of the major candidates to be the, the former president, major candidate to be the next president, interviewing him about his campaign. What can the current incumbent administration do to stop that? That's a crazy question, and it came from the Washington Post. You would think, of course, that journalists would uh, value the protections uh, under the First Amendment, but this reporter and, and other reporters like him who are hell-bent on censoring people that they disagree with politically are operating under the fundamental conceit and premise that they control the levers of censorship. So what they're doing to people on the right will never happen to them. And of course, it's very ironic given the rise of Blue Anon that we've seen come back over the past year or so on no, X. Back. Oh, they're back they're in back. full force. You know, they're talking about the JD Vance couch memes. And oh yeah, that doesn't count. That's that's a joke, but it is for some reason doesn't make misinformation. People start going, woo, woo, you can't say that. Right. They think it's funny. Well, and then we have a whole bunch of them who have been going on that Trump staged the shooting or that he right. wasn't actually hit by a bullet. He was hit by teleprompter yeah. glass. But it's only right-wing right. people who deserve to be kicked off of the platform, who deserve to be demonetized. And of course, this is also in the context of just a week ago, Elon Musk filing that lawsuit against the GARM for colluding with advertisers to try to prohibit uh, uh, big corporations from spending money on X because it didn't meet some sort of yeah. hate speech standard that they had come up with. Well, and with that one, where I think the problem is because, you know, you can't, you don't have some, if an advertiser doesn't want to advertise on your platform, you can't make them, that's just the way it goes. But if their advertisers are getting incorrect information about the platform from, I, I think it's not so much the advertisers themselves that are, like they're not paying that much attention. And if they are paying attention, they're paying attention to, you know, those fat checking watchdog type organizations like Media Matters and the Anti-Defamation League that are saying, oh, there's all this hate and misinformation on the platform and they've been caught making that case in dishonest ways. So I'm always like, well, go after those organizations. You know, going after the the advertiser, what is that gonna get you at the end of the day? But it, this, right, this G-A-R-M group that's sort of this weird European conglomerate of things uh, did sound like it was backing down after, um, after that lawsuit. But that just goes to the major point here, which is that European authorities' views of speech are so bad, <laughs> are so 
you know, they don't have the protections of the First Amendment. But this guy, I, which, whose name I never know exactly how to say, like Thierry Breton. Or a, <laughs> I'm sure a, that's it. I don't I, I I have no idea. It, I want to say it in the most contemptible, <laughs> disgusting, French-European way possible. He's really the face of the censorship that the European Union, the European Commission represents. So he sent this letter to Elon the other day saying... I see you will have this conversation with the Trump. I know I don't know what this he is so like. great. I'm not going to do that for much longer. Um, that uh, they were going to interview Trump, and he says in this letter, you know, we're paying close attention to see if there will be any misinformation, and you know, you're not allowed to do that according to Europe. And uh, it, it was a really, really bad letter. And I was glad to see pushback, not only from a lot of people on the right, uh, also even some uh, Democrats and people on the left, Ro Khanna responded to it saying, no, this is not, you know, we, we don't do this here in the US. We don't censor this kind of speech. Um, but it puts companies like X, you know, in a difficult place when Elon, you know, doesn't want to have to have a separate what, a stream of the conversation where parts of it are censored or blocked off for European audiences? I can't imagine European u listeners and users either, you know, want that either. No, and I can't imagine that Elon Musk would even accept that. He'd probably yeah. just tell them to go pound sand, or as he told advertisers who wanted to pull ads from X previously, that they can go F themselves. And I just can't imagine how you could be someone who lives in the United States, enjoys the protections that we have, um, that are enshrined in the Constitution, and look at people being thrown in jail for sending social media posts that the government doesn't like in Europe, and think, yeah, that system looks better than ours. Yeah. I think that will that will be better for democracy. Well, and it's, it's no accident, I, I bring this up all the time, that there's no tech sector in Europe. The tech companies are all headquartered in the U.S. because of our, our because to the extent they're content um, their speech supplying organizations, we have a friendly regulatory infrastructure for that. It's not just about our philosophical commitments to free speech, although those are important. Those are what make for a good business environment for companies that want to flourish in this sector. And Europe has decided to just like crush these things underfoot. I mean, and, and by, by Europe decided, I mean, this isn't the people of Europe deciding this. In, you know, Brexit was partly a response to the people in the UK wanting to exit this arrangement with European officials where a bunch of bureaucrats are deciding all these policies in totally non-democratic ways. They're not being voted upon or arrived at by the peoples of Europe. They're being arrived at by professional uh, bureaucrats who think that they have some right, some power, some obligation to thwart what they call misinformation, a, to a recently invented category of speech that lacks all proper definition. And as we, you know, as we know from a very um, simple philosophical free speech tradition that you know, it would be easy if we all knew what was true and what was false, we could prohibit it, but we disagree on what's truth and what's false. And sometimes people in positions of authority who think they know get it wrong. And so we must, we should, we ought to have an environment where you have healthy debate and the truth not always, but often wins out. Again, very basic, like enlightenment kind of originating from European countries themselves, from Western European countries, they pioneered this. And then the US was founded in these ideals and the authority systems there just want to totally turn their back on it. Right. And I think it's also important to point out that there have been these this series of riots taking place in some European countries, um, almost directly in response to the fact that the government leadership there has been totally dismissive and has even punished people for trying to speak up against some of the things that some of the wrong-headed policies that have really destroyed the European middle class over the past decade or so. And um, obviously, I never condone political violence, but I think you, you look at what's happening there and understand why there's so much just rage and frustration. Well, if people, right, if people feel like they don't have the right to speak. And, you know, if they, they want to say that, you know, some of the violence going on is based on, um, is based on incorrect a reporting and information about the situation in the UK, as some people said, Elon spread that himself. Like, okay, correct it, then right. then speak out against it. Elon Explain has created a wrong. system. He's created a platform where you can actually do community notes. You can put on that post, "This is wrong for this reason." That's the answer to it. That's great, and people are. It's it's happening collaboratively in real time. We. It's not going to make the situation better to have this one person, this one bureaucrat, deciding who gets to say what. Well, what. 
what, what is what is he right about? Who and knows? if you compare what was happening on X prior to what's happening now, the biggest criticism that you could have of Elon Musk's uh, control of Twitter slash X is that there's too much information, yeah. which I think is great compared to what we had previously and still have on many platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, where a small group of content moderators unilaterally make decisions on what is allowed on the platform and tend to get it wrong because they have deep political biases that influence the way that they view content moderation, where you go beyond what the terms of service are and are actively policing what you believe to be misinformation. That's how you get YouTube videos taken down because yeah. you have somebody in it saying that the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting COVID. Right. Or you get the New York Post banned summarily from pretty much every social media platform because they run the Hunter Biden laptop story before all of the mainstream media. Um, or you have uh, women who aren't allowed to tweet anymore because they said that their menstrual cycle was affected by a COVID vaccine. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would much rather have the alternative where I have the opportunity to sift through all of the available information and use my judgment as an adult human being and my reason to determine what it, what is true and what is not, rather than some nanny state trying to preemptively prevent me from seeing that information in the first place. Indeed. Well, we'll have more free media right after this.